The Real Housewives of DC has largely been forgotten in the minds of Housewives fans. It's understandable why this is the case, as the show only had one season, which aired over a decade ago, and none of the Housewives went on to have bigger careers in the public's eye. But I watched it for the first time recently, and I was floored by how incredible it was. It brought a lot to the table and was unique from other franchises. I thought it would be fun to make this video speculating on what could have been had this series continued. I think there are a few key ways the Bravo universe as a whole could be markedly different had DC remained on the air, both for better and for worse. Before we get into that, however, it's important to note why exactly DC was canceled. It wasn't due to poor casting, low ratings, or not enough drama. In fact, there was an event that was just too dramatic for it to continue. You see, there was this one housewife, Mikhail Salahi, who was the lightning rod for controversy that season. Next to nobody liked her, and she was incredibly codependent with her husband, Tarek. If you haven't seen it, think Alex and Simon from early New York and put them on steroids. They had a bit of a grifter vibe and hit below the belt in their fights. They were even involved in a legal situation with Tarek's own mother, just to give you a sense of the couple. So, in an effort to prove themselves, they decided to crash Obama's first state dinner in 2009. They were legitimately trying to secure an invitation through their connections with Indian diplomats via the world of polo, but when it didn't come through, they said to hell with it, we're going anyway. I want to just quickly note that the Salahis maintained on the show that none of this is true that they were actually invited but that's kind of not the story that anybody else tells so I'm going to proceed with it so you see they didn't reveal any of this stuff to production but rather they made it seem that they were in fact invited they just misplaced the physical invitation but that doesn't matter they were somehow able to bypass security and spent the night schmoozing with the likes of current president joe biden it was through a strange series of coincidences that they ended up getting caught you see, there was a reporter who happened to be at the event while also covering the casting and filming of The Real Housewives of D.C. who noticed that they were there and checked to see if they were invited. And when she found out they weren't and spoke up about it, it caused this huge media firestorm and ended up becoming a nightmare for Bravo. The media began to speculate that Bravo had set the whole thing up for publicity, so they had to restructure the season to cover their own booties. The couple was forced to testify before Congress, White House staffers got fired, and Bravo had their footage subpoenaed. In the end, the network decided that the juice just wasn't worth the squeeze and pulled the plug on the series entirely. I think this is a shame, as DC really brought a fresh feel to the Housewives universe, and I think some of the positive aspects of the show could have rippled out onto the other franchises. I think there are three key ways the Housewives universe really could have changed had DC remained on the air. The first is in its display of meteor political discussion. Production really played into the political aspect of DC and seemed to have encouraged the ladies to discuss the hot topics of the day. The series was shot early on in Obama's presidency, and we heard a few conversations begin by asking what someone thought of Obama. What do you guys think about Obama? I'm really excited about his position on the two-state solution, to be quite honest. And we also learned a lot about the ladies, for better or for worse, when they met with a congressman who was trying to legalize same-sex marriage in D.C. at the time. Most people that aren't gay think that this issue has nothing to do with them. And I'm not really willing to allow any of my friends to feel that way. They should all be stepping up and standing up for this bill to pass. We are also treated to a delightful scene in one of my personal favorites involving housewife Kat, a British woman, married to a White House photographer who was so outspoken, opinionated, and unfiltered that she made Brandy Glanville look demure. She met up for high tea with a Republican healthcare lobbyist and made her opinion quite known. It's kind of verging on criminal that people should be, have to pay to have healthcare. I mean, this, this human right to, if you're ill, to be looked after. 44,000 Americans per year to die for they, not having health care is just sick and wrong. Um, um, there's nothing good. right about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the NHS in the UK isn't great, but I tell you, no one goes without. I know. We've got to fix it's it. It's insane. Yeah. And this is America. You're supposed Are to do everything much better than us. I mean, you guys certainly don't when it comes to that. Is that a cucumber sandwich? While we do see scenes of this nature occur occasionally on other franchises. What were you saying, Camille? I just have a totally different feeling. Why do you have a totally different feeling? She didn't have enough evidence. It would have been interesting to see if this would have been something contained to DC or if it would have reverberated onto the other franchises. I also think it would have been fascinating to have an insider's look into DC via the Housewives over the past decade in US political history. I can only imagine how crazy some of the plot lines would have been had the housewives been there during Trump's campaign and tenure in office.
The second way DC was different was with its racially integrated cast. At this time in Bravo history, casts were mostly racially segregated, but it seemed to be a point of priority to the production team to showcase the diversity of DC. While we only had one full-time black cast member in Stacey Scott Turner, much of the supporting cast was black. We had Erica, the longtime friend of both Stacey and full-timer Mary Amons, who was involved in much of the non mikhail related conflict within the season, as well as friend Paul Wharton, who was the only person on good terms with every member of the cast, so we saw quite a bit of him. We also saw a lot of Stacey's husband, Jason, as well as housewife Linda's boyfriend, Abong, who was Nigerian. We also saw black culture celebrated when we visited the only black-owned vineyard in the area, as well as with Stacey's soul food dinner, which brought up quite a bit of conflict. The show also didn't shy away from discussions about race and unconscious racism within the cast. When Kat went on a tirade against Tyra Banks... Or did you say poor you? Yeah. You don't like Tyra? Oh, no. Oh, I love Tyra! Expressed the offense she took at Barack Obama for not RSVPing to her wedding and displayed seeming discomfort in black spaces, we were able to see both Stacey and Erica speculate on why this might be. Okay, how do I say this? Gently. She is not used to being in an environment where it's majority black people. And so I think that she just felt uncomfortable which I can kind of sympathize with, but not really. Because how many places do we go when we are always the only ones? Always. We're always that way. And it's, it's, no, it's no big deal. It's not like anybody's coming over to me saying, are you okay? Yeah. Are you Of course, things weren't handled perfectly when Linda, who was raised in southern Georgia, talks about the quote-unquote reverse racism she experienced growing up at a dinner with Stacey, Jason, and Abong. We don't get confessionals from them. I would not be served because I was white. Oh. That is We also witnessed both Stacey and Erica be put in uncomfortable situations. Girlfriend, I just was like, I saw that, you're like... Hi. Hi. We're having a great conversation. You guys are going to be good friends. Blondes need to integrate. We have different hair, different needs, but why do we have to be in a different salon? But even with that, I think the diverse casting was a net good. And I think had DC stayed on the air, we could have seen some spillover effects into the other franchises, allowing them to integrate a bit more gracefully than we've seen in the past few years. The last major change to the Housewives universe would of course be the Potomac of it all. As Potomac is a suburb of DC, I have to wonder would it have been brought to air had DC remained? I think the answer is almost assuredly no, as it wouldn't make sense to have two franchises essentially in the same city, but I think this opens up two interesting wormholes that we can go down. First is whether or not any of the Potomac ladies would have ended up on the DC Housewives. I would think the answer is yes, as most of the DC ladies lived in the suburbs themselves anyways. In Not All Diamonds and Rosé, Karen Huger states that she knew it was only a matter of time before Bravo found her, and I have to think she's right. The woman was made to be a housewife, as is the case with Giselle Bryant. I think there's a good chance that in this alternate universe, we would have eventually seen the two ladies on screen, but then the question becomes if we would have seen different versions of them. As they are both OGs of Potomac, we see them really owning the space that they take up on the show, but they had but had they had to have walked into an established cast as rookies, we may not have seen the same confident, high-status women we see currently warring over the Potomac region. I also think that Ashley Darby is another woman we could have eventually seen on the show, as with possibly Katie Ross, but I don't think we would have seen a Robin or maybe even not a Candace gracing our screens on DC. The second wormhole a lack of Potomac opens up is the question of if we would have gotten another franchise with a predominantly black cast. In Not All Diamonds and Rosé, Giselle expresses her desire to see a spinoff in Chicago, a city that seems to have been left out of the housewives equation. My personal desire would be for New Orleans, as it's such a beautiful city with a unique culture that I think many of us viewers would really love to explore. Now, had DC remained on the air, the question is, where would it have gone? It premiered shortly before Beverly Hills, so at the time of writing this, it would likely be going into its 12th season. I think the cast member who would have stood the test of time is Linda Ercolation. She had that alpha dog quality about her, kind of a Vanderpump or a Karen Huger sense, where she knows everyone and has a deep understanding of the society she lives in and how it functions. She was a bit messy, so she certainly would have brought the drama. I think Mary Amons, too, could have made a deep run. She was old money and had deep family roots in the area. 
She also had a bit of a snooty feel, but in the best way. She said on podcasts since the show that a lot of her character arc ended up on the cutting room floor as the show had to devote so much screen time to the Salahis. So I don't think we as viewers got a true sense of her, but I really think that there's a lot more than what we saw on the first season. I think Kat and Mikhail would have lasted one to two more seasons, maybe, and then flamed out spectacularly. Despite tanking the show, Mikhail was incredibly kooky and delusional, and I especially enjoyed watching other people react to her. She actually ended up leaving Tarek shortly after the show and ran off with a member from the band Journey, which would have been absolutely insane to have witnessed playing out on TV. Kat also had revealed that she had already separated from her husband by the time they filled the reunion, so we definitely would have had a lot from her for the next season. To me, she had kind of a Danielle Stop quality about her in that she's super reactive and also is a mother trying to protect her daughter while at the same time being this loose cannon type of person. I'm not sure how long Stacy would have lasted, given that she didn't really have a big outrageous personality that we see in many of the memorable housewives. I did enjoy following her journey and finding her birth parents, and I think aside from his commentary on gay marriage, I really enjoyed her husband, but they ended up getting divorced only a few years after the show wrapped. So I think unless fame really changed her in a severe way and she got a lot more dramatic, I'm not really sure that she would have stood the test of time. So that's my take on what could have been. I'm definitely curious to hear other people's opinions on both DC just in general and if you would have liked it to stay on the air. So let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!